Welcome, everybody. So, as you all know, we have vendor demonstrations. And uh, this show, we're going to talk about a couple different things from IA. And uh, we'll go kind of fast. If uh, you have more questions, ask us afterwards. You know and heard me talk about influence. IA has always been about fractional services. Our client base for the last 23 years has been fractional services. And what does that mean? It means that you hire us to be on your shoulder when you need us. You get a fraction of our time, but you get the power of our entire organization. So if you're faced with a problem, you just hire us. You call us up on the phone, you pay for the time that you buy from us, and then we go away, you put us back in the drawer, and you go about doing what you do best, cleaning hoods, keeping people safe, right? So we're a fairly uh, large company. Uh, we have uh, people or clients in 36 countries, all 50 states. Uh, we have a lot of influence in our market. We're a niche or a boutique firm. We're very specialized. By that I mean, well, for one, we're fractional, but two, we don't advertise outside of doing educational things like this. And every one of our clients comes from referral. So um, you're being referred, if you will, by our influence at ICA. Uh, I started as an accountant, so my underlying foundation is as an accountant, but I went into management information systems. Uh, Michael, this is Michael Siganik. He is one of our associates in Chicago. He runs uh, our marketing division, but he's also headed up a uh, technology uh, initiative we've had in collaboration with Rob Hove to develop an operations system that helps run KEC companies, actually service companies, but specifically right now it's for KEC companies. Um, it's ready to roll out for beta testing. It's free to roll out for beta testing. We'll charge if you have us help you support it, but you don't get charged for the software. So the reason we're doing that is we want to make it like Omni has done with products for the rooftop. We want to develop this product for you, and we're not going to charge you until it's right. And then when we do, it's really not going to be that much. It's going to be very, very uh, reasonable and fit into your ROI models specifically for each of you. Um, what I'm going to do is let Michael take over and he may ask some questions for clarification. If you have questions, please interface and ask them because it's really important for us to help you get a takeaway from these very short 20 minutes. So Michael, take over. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm gonna, we're, I'm gonna jump into the database here in just a little bit. I'm just gonna touch a little bit more on some of the fractional executive services that we offer. Um, I'm sure many of you wear multiple hats at your organizations, right? You guys are making all the executive leadership uh, decisions. You're having to look at the marketing, the advertising, you know, everything from A to Z. Because if anything goes wrong with the company, obviously you guys own it. That's a decision that you guys have to take care of. As IA Fractional Services uh, plays a role in that, we are able to supplement some issues that you may be having. Say you're having an issue with uh, bookkeeping would be a great example. So a uh, uh, conversation that I had with a client about three or four weeks ago, he had called up asking for some bookkeeping help. He's like, I just need another person to help us do some bookkeeping. Uh, we're getting behind on that and we just, we really need to get that in order. Two and a half hours later through that conversation, we figured out that it was more than just a bookkeeping problem that he was having. He had open invoices that were upwards in six figures. And I'm sure you guys can imagine the kind of problems that that would lead to. But that is the, the type of in-depth in analysis that we do on your company. It's, if the leg of that chair fell off, we don't just put the leg back on. What made that leg fall off? Is there a number of things that were stacked up on that uh, chair that caused that leg to break? We really want to get at what the underlying problem is to heal the organization and heal that issue going further. Does that make sense? Uh, some of the, and Brian, if you want to touch on some of the executive services that you've dealt with for, at, from a CEO level and a CFO level. Yeah, so within the KEC group, um, I have help with strategy, market penetration, uh, setting culture, 
Um, I'm a culture guy, you all know that. My book's about culture. Uh, I live in culture every day for my clients. So uh, maybe high turnover issues, why we have high turnover issues, why do we have retention issues, why is it so hard to get people to come to our company or to even look at our company. And you can tell me all day long that it's an industry issue, but I'll tell you right back that the clients that we engage with don't have those problems. So why is it that we can walk into an organization and solve those problems? That tells me, and that's across the country. So it's not an industry problem. It's usually looking in the mirror and finding out why. How are we, how are we talking about it? Anyhow, that's what CEO services is, is setting up leadership, motivating, training, developing culture, developing strategy, and implementing strategy. Go ahead. Same thing here, CFO services, you know, but it's all about the money. You can't, you can't control it if you can't measure it. But how do we control it? What do we use to control and understand our numbers? What do numbers mean and what, number, what numbers are important to culture, to strategy, to growth, and those types of things? So, next. So I'll jump in here on the CIO technology portion of it. I am a big technology person. I believe that the right technology put in place with the right company and the right mentality can make overall work, workflow work quicker and more effectively, thereby saving you guys money. But in saying that, you don't have the same learning curve that you do for all of your employees, right? Have you guys experienced that? You have some employees who maybe don't have much computer experience at all. I mean, even from a CRM or, you know, maybe they just know basic things like picking up the phone, calling, writing it down on a yellow sticky pad, and that's how they save their notes, right? Which is great. Hey, they're picking up the phone, they're dialing, they're doing the work, but how are we tracking that information? How, what kind of information are your crews tracking when they're going out there and visiting these kitchens? Are there... Are there tidbits of information that you want them to pick up so that you know as an owner, all right, these are some things that we can look out for next time to see how we can service this customer better or get a higher ROI on that client? Have you guys experienced that? Do you guys track that type of information with your specific companies? Okay. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Okay. And you just feel like putting that in place would take a lot more time than it's worth? I'd convince myself of that. Okay. I wouldn't have already thought. I think that's a common answer. Is what that both of you guys said is. Don't know where to start. Don't know that there are tools out there that are inexpensive that you can actually have that are cost effective, that give you information that's valuable. And people just don't know. All they see are the buzzwords, the smoke and mirrors, the lights and everything else. But when you open the hood, it just doesn't quite meet. The Austrian client, I'm just embarrassed. Give me a job. I'm embarrassed. It, I'm embarrassed by how little I don't. And we that's what we experience all the time. Most often, a reason why a problem doesn't get solved is I mean, you all are proud people. You're running organizations. You guys are doing great work. You're building small businesses, making them bigger, hiring people, helping your communities, right? That's a big job. And now to add on uh, additional information to track and then reach out to somebody and be like, look, I'm not doing this as effectively as I could be, it, it, it's a tough thing to do. So, true. But then at least, but that's, that's where you start, right? That's a starting point right there, then understanding how, I, how can I use this information for our organization to make it work better and inevitably increase the ROI overall for the company, right? Uh, and then with marketing. So marketing, we have a wide range of marketing capabilities from social media, websites, published materials, uh, our lead graphic designer, Jared Smith, uh, no relation to Brian, but he's painted, uh, what was it, F-15, everything yeah. from F-15 jets to uh, app, phone app logos. Yeah, so Jared has been with us a long time, 14 <clears throat> years. Uh, he heads up our graphic de design uh, department. He's based in Oregon. And we do, we have a national contract with the Department of Defense. Every fighter pilot can have a piece of art on their jet. And we designed that. 
he's, he's actually the head designer. And he sits with a pilot and creates and captures the emotion and what goes into being a fighter pilot and puts it on their plane. Well, he gives that same attention of detail to every client we have. And if you go look at his portfolio, it's, it's diverse, it's eclectic, but it's amazing. And if you followed Omni Containment Systems through the years, and if you remember it in the old days and where it's come for the last 10 years and how that imagery has been has pervasive in the market, just that one company and what it's done with logos and ad campaigns and the things that make you remember us, that's what I mean by diverse. Is he developed that. He, he captured the spirit of what the company wanted to have. And that, re that really comes down to the branding and which, what's the brand of your company worth. Uh, one thing that I've had a few discussions with uh, some of your fellow KICA members here this weekend or this week, and it's really getting people to understand that what you provide the average family, honestly, before I started working with Brian and I got into understanding the ICA industry and I do some work with uh, Omni Containment and a few other KEC companies right now, I didn't realize the importance and the safety that you guys play just for a family to go out to eat. And I know there's a millions of other Americans who don't understand that. You guys are necessary for families to be able to enjoy time together safely. And I think that's something that really I think I could talk about more is just the safety that you guys provide and what the value of your companies are worth. Uh, And the, to piggyback on that, how do you usually find your clients? Is it similar to how it, you're getting referrals from clients that you have now? Do you have people that cold call and pick you up? And it's probably usually it's an emergency situation. Is that what you guys have experienced? That's a good volume of our users that we have for us. Mm -hmm. OK, so client referrals. And if there's an emergency, somebody reaches out to you? OK. Mm -hmm. well, so you guys, it sounds like you guys have great reputation so far, and that's, that's great. That's awesome. That's great. I mean, that's one of the reasons you come to the, uh, a conference like this is to make those network connections similar to how you guys have already done that. Uh, and building, integrating that reputation and talking about that, if you guys are doing a good job, you should ask your clients to tell other people that you're doing a good job. Uh, they should be leaving reviews for you on, you know, on Google review, Facebook review. Yes? We did a mail out, and I was wanting, I wish I would have had a better response. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about making a little message for us, but, you know, it's still that early stage, so I'll have to find more stuff to add. But we also did, like, a little mailer, like, part of the review, mm -hmm. you know, just to give away the TV podcast. Wow. Really? Yeah. And, I, and it was my fault. I didn't allow us to come to the event. Mm -hmm. Like, if it was a big event, you had to do it within a certain amount of time, like a, a 10 day to two weeks. Mm -hmm. Not as if there's like a word bill and people are sitting down for dinner. It was just, you know, it was just wrong. So I'm, I'm not giving up on trying to do something good for everybody. That, I, I think that's a great idea, and that's a great campaign. Now, did you say that was an email? That was something that was a physical piece of mail? Okay. And our guys were doing one thing up at the restaurant. So I thought, well, the managers will do it. Mm hmm. You know, they're going to be fine. But they didn't yeah, really. I mean, you give free stuff away like that, typically the response rate is going to be much more increased. But doing a campaign like that is outstanding. I would also uh, piggy that, piggyback that with put it out there on your social media, put it out there on your website, put a pop up on your website tell people about it in the digital fashion so if they're coming to uh, check you out and check out your website, they're getting that uh, information as well, especially I would send that out in a, a newsletter campaign. Consistency. Yeah, so, that's really. Yeah. And I was going to say, if you think about doing it on the invoice, but if you can make these, there's people that people typically mm -hmm.
that in giving away an iPad, that's we have five minutes left. Yeah. that really surprises me that the the response okay. rate would right. be that low. Yeah. When your when your team goes out there, are they making that a point of emphasis? You know what I mean? Yeah. When they And it, you the, know. the consistency matters. Yeah. So, so I've sold 20,000 books since October. I'm really proud of it. I have 16 reviews on Amazon from 20,000 books. One who, of knows who, who knows where uh, Victrola, <laughs> the turntables, yeah. right? Okay. Um, we have a stake in that company, okay? They sold 60,000 Victrolas last year on Amazon. 163 reviews is all they could get. The only way we get them is through consistent messaging. So you're going to have to find a way on your work orders, okay? Have your teams ask, mm -hmm. consistency. And if you do it as a unified voice through the whole company, it becomes a culture of service mm -hmm. through asking for reviews, especially if you get a bad review and instead of trying to argue with it, you take it as constructive and you reply in a positive way. You can go a long ways with that. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, actually connecting with that person to leave the review is, is what's tough when they're just kind of leaving that uh, mailer there. What's wrong? Go ahead. That's the thing. Yeah, so I know how that goes. First, they want to be phone, they want to talk to you and say, mm -hmm. hey, we have a confirmation, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe some will answer, you know, hopefully the, the mailings that you send out. And then, you know, all those things together. together. Yeah, and you keep doing that, like Brian said, with the consistency, because as we know, people are probably, they will, they're quick to leave you a bad review, aren't they? Yeah. You know, but do we ask for the good reviews? And, and that's what's important. Yep. So I'm going to transition over to the database that we've been working on with Rob Ho. Do any of you use a CRM right now to track your customers, like a Salesforce or a Zoho? What do you use it? Salesforce. Salesforce? And you? Service, service Trade. Service Trade? Okay. Okay, so you have those integrated together? This probably won't be, this probably won't be for people who have though, that technology in place because this technology is parallel to that. Okay, I came from this world and so um, it doesn't even supplement so much because those software packages, Service Trade, Salesforce, provide the same type of so offerings and detail and data that come out of this. But you'd be surprised how many of our peers don't have anything. Mm -hmm. They still do it by paper. You know, Brian, spreadsheets. I, I underutilize under service trade terribly. I just, I, I, I have five bucks and say, you know, Mm -hmm. right. And that's and that's really that's why I, and Rob started this in in the in the platform that he began it with when we started working with him. It was still a little bit raw, and we've tried to uh, well we haven't tried we have developed it more specific for your industry. If you are a, a smaller KEC company that can't necessarily afford because Salesforce I'm sure you know is expensive. It's it's something you pay monthly or yearly subscription for. And there's a lot of bells and whistles. And as, as I was talking about earlier, depending on who your staff is, they're probably not all going to be able to operate a sales force. I mean, I've, I've seen many companies who their employees don't understand how to use the technology they have. Then it's just, I mean, it's a sunk cost, right? So what this right here is going to do, it's going to track your work orders. 
your work orders, all of your customer information, um, if the work order is open, if it's unpaid, you have your contact information. You'll have your contact information down here. And so we're tracking all the information for the client, and we're also tracking, all right, well, here's my next due dates. Is it at your company, once you have that, you service that appointment, is it automatically they know in the next 90, 120, whatever the skirt, uh, service scheduling is, do they know that that's automatically an appointment? Or is it you have to follow up after that appointment then set another appointment? So it's more analytical. Everybody knows Rob Hove. He's a very analytical guy. So it's an analytical system that's been developed in a more Windows-friendly environment. And by Windows, everybody knows what that means, Microsoft. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as flashy as a Salesforce or a service trade. It's not as, it's not as, it's not as polished. It's, it's black and white. It, it speaks to what we do as KEC providers, right? It's amazingly simple and it is in support of amazingly simple business processes. We're out of time. Oh, are we? Yeah, this, this right here has all the templates and everything that's already built in there. I, it's got a sample customer base. All that has to be done is removing the sample customer base, inputting your customers. And that's where we can help out on some of the stuff that Brian was talking about um, in implementing this for your company. And one thing I want to leave you le with before you go, because I know time is short, if you go to our website, and not Microsoft Word, <laughs> come on. If you go to our, if you go to our website, and the URL is ICA CRM. That's all you have to do is put that after the slash at IA Business Advisors. I got a video in there showing you how to use it. And so is it one cost or is it per right now it's free. Right now it's free. If you need help yeah. implementing it, we're going to ask you to pay us for our time. But I, people get frustrated. But who's frustrated when your lawyer sends you a bill for time? <laughs> Yeah. So we just want people to try it. And it's it's like you said, it's very simplistic. All you really have, all you need, is to have uh, access to Microsoft Access. And if you don't have a Microsoft subscription, you can get one as low as six dollars a month. So it's so it's a very useful tool that can help you track some of this important information that can help your companies really grow. So, so if you have questions, please come. We're going to be here the rest of the day, yeah. but send us an email. Um, I travel all the time. I'm, you know, uh, send me an email and say, hey, when's the next time you're going to be so and so? And I get around the country on a constant basis. I'm constantly traveling. And I have been known, ask your peers, to take little diversions and just go visit people. Crazy places like Nelson's place in Egg Harbor, which isn't exactly easy to get to, you know, or just off the beaten path because that's the level of service we like. And I like people. I'm a people person. So that's it. We're going to try to switch rooms. Thank you, All right. Thank Thanks. Folks, uh, the grid block is right in the next room, and there's Nova, and it's hard, huh? in the main. Appreciate you coming, Joe.